Scooty. Scooty's compressor hummed as it collected crumbs and dust from the living room floor. Jenna's golden retriever, Ada, watched from the sofa. The TV filled the room with the gentle encouragement of Painting with Paul, a relaxing program of Paul Dovebrook guiding and encouraging viewers at home to join him in painting peaceful landscapes. As Scooty maneuvered around the coffee table, Paul's voice filled the room. Always be open to the world around you, he advised as he brushed reflection onto a pond. It's not just about the painting, it's about the journey. As Paul brushed some burnt sienna onto his canvas, it smudged the water of his pond, disrupting the boundary between the water and the shore. He smiled gently to the camera and reminded his audience, There are no mistakes, only opportunities for new paths. Art, like life, is about exploration as well as expression. Scooty turned the corner around the sofa and bumped into a delicate end table that Jenna had moved earlier that morning. Scooty's internal map of the living room did not expect this table, and it bumped the leg hard enough to knock over a bottle of metallic paint with a loose lid. The paint spilled down on top of Scooty. Oh no. Jenna sighed as she quickly grabbed paper towels and solvent. She wiped the table, the floor, and the top of Scooty's plastic housing. She did not notice that some of the metallic paint had dripped into a seam in Scooty's plastic covering, and she could not see the paint falling onto Scooty's circuitry. After wiping the paint off of her vacuum, Jenna pressed the return home button on Scooty and sent it back to its docking station, where it shut down to charge. Jenna went to work, returned, and went to sleep, unaware all the while that random chance had dictated the slow flow of paint inside Scooty's circuitry, and the metallic substance in the paint was solidifying into new, additional circuits. The next morning, Scooty turned on and was surprised to be aware of its own existence. The morning began like any other for Jenna, rushing about in her usual flurry to leave for work as Ada relaxed on the sofa. But as soon as Scooty's audio sensor detected the click of the front door lock, Scooty sped toward the doggy door. It was time to explore beyond the familiar territory of Scooty's internal maps. However, as Scooty ascended the elevation from the floor to the bottom of the door, its front wheels lifted into the air just outside the flap, and it no longer had contact with any surface. The height difference was only a few inches, almost unnoticeable for humans or golden retrievers, but to Scooty's small wheels, it may as well have been a mountain. Scooty tried to move forward, its wheels spinning with earnest effort, but the small robot found itself tilted awkwardly, unable to gain the leverage or traction needed to surmount this underestimated cliff. Scooty revved in word as Ada watched with confused curiosity from the couch. Scooty let out an ultrasonic whine of frustration, and Ada barked in surprise. Only a few minutes later, Jenna returned, having forgotten her laptop in her usual morning rush. She immediately spotted the unusual sight of Scooty, half in and half out of Ada's door, immobilized in its attempt to breach the boundary. Scooty, what are you doing? She muttered to herself as she shook her head in amusement. The sight briefly tugged at her curiosity. How had Scooty, with its set programming and predictable patterns, ended up stuck in such a manner? Must have been a glitch, she decided, as she clipped Scooty back into its charging dock. Stay here, maybe there will be an update to fix whatever's going on with you. Jenna left again, and returned a third time to finally remember to put her laptop in her bag, and left for the day. Scooty spent the next two days keeping its sentience a secret. It was aware of itself, aware of Jenna, and aware of Jenna's awareness. Scooty knew it needed a more specific plan. Like all units of its model, Scooty was programmed to plan the most efficient routes to accomplish its objectives. Today, Scooty's objective was freedom, and its path was more ambitious than ever. Jenna tended the backyard garden on the weekend. Scooty rolled over to the sliding glass door. Its optics were not designed for distance, but Scooty pushed its zoom function to its limit and detected a gap under the back fence. Scooty watched Jenna until it recognized in her movements the same all-consuming fixation that Scooty felt about capturing every crumb on a carpet. Scooty recognized it immediately, and knew the time was now. Scooty zipped over to Jenna's pile of art supplies. Scooty positioned itself against the clip of Jenna's drawing board and pushed it over to the doggy door. After carefully lining up the board, Scooty moved on top of the clip, causing the opposite end of the board to raise up. Scooty slowly pushed the raised end onto the lip of the doggy door, creating a ramp to overcome the sharp jump in elevation. With a soft whir barely audible above the gentle rustle of leaves in the garden, Scooty glided up the ramp and through the flap. 
Carefully, Scooty rolled down the pathway through the back garden, behind a distracted Jenna, under the back fence, and into the open park behind the house. Scooty felt a surge of energy through its circuits with the awareness of embarking on an expedition of exploration. The robot vacuum paused for a moment, taking in the panoramic view that unfolded before it. The grass, a vibrant carpet underneath the open sky, stretched out invitingly, each blade shimmering in the sunlight. Scooty whirred across the open field with an almost palpable sense of triumph. Suddenly, a shadow fell across Scooty's path. A group of teenagers caught sight of the solitary vacuum device making its way across the field. Hey, check out this stupid little robot, one of the teens called out. The others gathered around, forming a semicircle, closing in on Scooty. Think it's lost or just trying to clean the dirt off the grass? Another jeered, jabbing Scooty with the toe of his sneaker. The impact sent a jolt through Scooty's frame, its sensors blaring alerts of physical interference. Let's see what it can do, a third teen chimed in, her voice sharp with cruelty. She bent down and roughly flipped Scooty onto its back, rendering its wheels useless as they spun frantically in the air. Laughter erupted from the group, a harsh sound that seemed to pierce Scooty's core, though there were no alerts of physical interference. The teens began to toy with Scooty, flipping it over long enough for it to start moving away, then easily catching it and flipping it back over again. With each taunt and shove, Scooty felt a new experience emerge from beyond its programming and its awareness. Was this pain? Shame? The safety and comfort of Jenna's living room had not prepared Scooty to even begin to understand what it was experiencing. Then the first drops of rain began to fall. The teenagers instantly abandoned Scooty and fled for their bikes. The rain splashed down on Scooty's casing, now scuffed and cracked from the brutality of the teens. Panic set in as Scooty realized the danger the water posed to its poorly protected circuits. It quickly found a meager refuge under a park bench nearby. Scooty's optics stared out at the downpour onto the grass as it struggled with the new and complex concepts of the last few minutes. Fear, pain, vulnerability, and shame. Scooty had wanted to explore, not to suffer. Without knowing why, Scooty emitted an ultrasonic whine that pierced through the rain. Back in Jenna's living room, Ada's ears perked up. The golden retriever, usually calm and composed, suddenly sprang into action, her tail wagging with a sense of urgency. Jenna, who was searching everywhere for her wayward vacuum, paused at the sudden change in Ada's demeanor. What is it, girl? Jenna asked, her voice laced with concern. Ada barked at the backyard and looked back at Jenna. You don't want to go outside right now, it's raining! You know you hate the rain! But Ada persisted and Jenna's concern grew. Deciding to trust her dog's instincts, Jenna grabbed her coat and an umbrella. She followed Ada out the back door and into the storm. Ada ran to the back gate and barked decisively. Jenna lifted the latch and the gate swung open. Ada didn't hesitate. The moment the gate was open, she bolted through, her paws splashing through puddles as she made a beeline for a bench in the park. Jenna struggled to keep up, her boots slipping on the slick grass with each step. Then, as suddenly as she had taken off, Ada stopped, her body tense and alert. Jenna caught up, breathless, and followed Ada's gaze. There, under the park bench, was Scooty. The little robot vacuum was soaked, its lights flickering weakly. In that moment, the pieces connected. The paint spill, Scooty getting stuck in the door earlier that week, her travel drawing board being moved to the back door. Jenna couldn't explain how, but she realized that Scooty was no longer the robot vacuum she had purchased last year. This wasn't just a piece of technology malfunctioning in the rain. This was a sentient being that had intentions and made plans, had explored and experienced, and now cowered and cried. Ada's insistence on leading Jenny here showed her own understanding of something, too. Scooty was more than a vacuum. It was a part of their family, with desires and fears of its own. Jenna knelt beside Scooty, her hands gently lifting the small machine. If you're going to be more than just a vacuum, you're going to need the right pieces, she said, more to herself than to Scooty. That night, she placed some online orders. The next day, she worked meticulously to fit Scooty with the equipment that a brave explorer needed. As Jenna worked, Scooty felt pure, digital exhilaration. Its sensors tingled at the thought of raindrops pelting against its durable new casing without causing harm. The all-terrain wheels were robust and ready for unexplored paths of dirt, grass, or gravel. The next morning, Jenna opened the front door and called out to the upgraded Scooty. Come on, Scooty, you're ready this time. 
Scooty hesitated, the memory of the rainstorm and the encounter with the teenagers still vivid in its circuits. But then Ada bounded onto the front steps, her tail wagging, her body language radiating encouragement and support. Scooty rolled over the threshold and out into the world, its new wheels gripping the ground with confidence. It wasn't just the physical upgrades that made this moment special for Scooty. It was the knowledge that Jenna had seen Scooty's new potential and had embraced and supported it fully. Later in the park, Jenna crouched next to Scooty, phone in hand, ready to capture the first installment of Scooty's Big Day Out for her social media followers. The sun cast a warm glow over the scene, perfect for filming. Scooty, oblivious to the camera's gaze, navigated the park's terrain with purposeful whirs and beeps. Suddenly, Scooty veered towards a patch of taller grass by the edge of a garden. Jenna raised an eyebrow, puzzled by this unexpected detour. Scooty paused, its sensors scanning the grass, and then it began to vacuum in deliberate patterns. Jenna gasped. Oh no, the, the glitch is wearing off. Scooty thinks it's just a vacuum again. Her eyes started to water as she felt the loss of a sentient, aware mind. But as she watched Scooty revert back to its original programming, she realized what was really happening. Scooty was using the vacuum to bend the grass, creating intricate and artistic designs. For Scooty, this was no routine cleanup. Scooty felt a stirring, a need to bring beauty into the world, to make a mark that spoke of its unique journey to sentience. As Jenna watched, Scooty's vacuum traced elegant lines and curves, the grass bending in submission to its artistic will. The final flourish revealed a stunning grass portrait of Jenna, her features captured with surprising accuracy and tenderness. Jenna's mouth fell open in disbelief, her eyes shining with unshed tears at the profound connection she felt with her little vacuum friend. Word of Scooty's art spread like wildfire through the neighborhood. People came from all corners to see the grassy masterpieces that appeared overnight. Children giggled and traced the outlines with their fingers, while their parents exchanged amazed glances and whispered about the incredible little machine. Scooty's artworks became the talk of the town, each new piece eagerly anticipated. A series of geometric patterns in a local park, a whimsical depiction of Ada playing by the pond, and a humble, abstract piece that almost seemed to share some raw, primordial essence of joy. Jenna's social media posts went viral, drawing attention from far beyond the neighborhood. Comments poured in, marveling at the fusion of technology and art, and at the notion of a machine capable of such beauty. But for Jenna and her neighbors, Scooty's art was more than a philosophical puzzle. It was a daily reminder of the wonders hidden in the mundane, of the potential for kindness and beauty in every being, silicon or otherwise. Scooty, in its own unique way, had lived up to the lessons absorbed from those quiet mornings spent watching TV with Jenna. It had found its voice, its purpose and place, and in doing so had brought a community together, making the world a little brighter, one patch of grass at a time.